In today's video, I'm going to introduce you to the concept of variables in Frema and show you how you can create very customizable components in Frema all without writing a single line of code. Okay, let's go. Okay, so to begin, I have this component um, I created here, which is the item card. I already did a tutorial on how you can create this in Frema and also how you can create this using CMS in Frema. So you can go watch those videos. It's right here on this channel, the Design Jackie's channel. All right, so I have the components here. And then let me just give you a brief of what you need to know about variables. So select the components. And then once you come to the properties panel, just pay attention and take a look at everything that you see that has a plus next to it. It means that thing can be set as a variable, right? So direction can be set as a variable, distribute, align, gap, all those things, down to fill, radius and rotation, all those things can be set as variables. So what variables basically mean is that it allows you to control the various things that you set as variables outside of the components, right? So let me just quickly demonstrate that. Let me just set this to this, uh, do this, okay. Spread this out. So for example, let's say I have two of these cards, right? And I want to change the image of this, right? So I'm not able to do this unless I go within this components and then go change that image here. So let me change this to a random image. All right, let me say this, All right? Once I change, it affects everything. Right, so typically what some people might do is that they will create multiple variants and then change. Let me do, let me undo this. So yeah, create multiple variants and then add the image they want to use in that second card as that variant. And then once they come here outside of here, they come to the properties panel and change the variant variant too. So like that is how some people or most people would do it but this is not very scalable right because you end up having loads of variants for example if you have like hundreds of items on your in your shop does it mean you are going to create hundreds um 100 different variants of course not let me undo this quickly and then show you how you can create this using the power of variables so again go back in there and then it says as the image i want to change here i select the image then i go to the properties panel this fill section, I click on the plus and I go to say create variable and I select image. Right. And I'm just going to name it as a main terminal. And I save it. That's pretty much it. So once you come outside, you realize once you select, you see this new option here in the properties panel that has the variable you set. So what that means is that you can now change the image of this or change the value of this variable to whatever it is you want without affecting the main components. So I just need to click on this image and then choose a new image and then choose the image I want to set it to. Simple as that. So that's the power of variables. It allows you to set new values for uh, stuff in your components without having to tweak their main components unnecessarily. Right, so that's one example. So let's say I want to be able to change the name of this item since it's a different um, item card. For that, again, go to the properties panel, find the contents where you usually enter the name of this item. Right, find that and then click on the name with a plus, set um, create variable, and just say plain text. Right. I say plain text and I say, yeah, item title. And that's it. You can set a default value. I'm just going to leave it as this. You can set it to whatever you want. And that's pretty much it. So once I go outside of this and then I select the second card, I can then change it to, let's say, it's an uh, card. And it changes to this. And as you can imagine, you can do the same for the price and all that right so let's say now i want to change the color of this text to something else right 
So again, same approach, select the item you want to set the variable for. Now I'll come down to the properties and then I'll select color. I'll say create a variable. I'll just name it to text color, right? And once I come outside of this, you realize I see the other option here that says text color and I can set it to whatever it is I want. All right, so let's say I want this to be yellow. All right. Great, so great. All right, so now what if I want all the colors in this card to be yellow? Does it mean I'm going to create different variables for this? No, I don't need to. So what I can do, and this is the second thing you need to know about variables, you can connect existing variables to um, other elements. So for example, I want to change this color to match the text color here of this title, item card. I select the amounts, then I go to color, press on the plus, then I go to the second option, which is set variable. And I set it to the existing uh, text color variable we already have. So I click on that. And then go outside, you see. All right, so now what it means is that any, anything I set as the bar color for this um, card title or the design junkies text here. And so the same thing will cut across the price. All right, so I want to set it to green. It will cut across the price as well. And you can imagine, you can do the same for this. So let me just set this variable to the text color and you see it's now green fantastic so like that's like a quick summary of um variables so now let's go to buttons so now buttons i have this so let's say um i want this page to lead to um let's just say google.com Oh no, let me just link it to the home. Wait, let me let me actually create a new page so we can see the difference. So it's a new page and let's see. Yeah, just leave it as page. Right. So then I go into this component and then for this button, I want to set it to this page. Right. I want it to open in the same tab. So you realize that if I preview this and if I click on the button, it takes me to the second page. All right, let me put a text there so you can see. Page two. Let me just say, like, so if I click on this button, it takes, it takes me to this page two. And you realize if I click on this button for this second card here, it takes me to the same page. So what if I want to set it to the two different cards to go to two different pages, right? So let me duplicate this page two and then name it page three, right? So I want this card to go to page two, this first card to go to page two, and I want this second card to go to page three. So I just need to, again, you don't need to create different variables for that. You just need to set a variable. So I select the button here then I select on the link to under the properties panel in the link section, I select the link to click on it and then say variable. That's pretty much it. So again, as you guessed, that will place up the option for me to add a link, um, specifically like a different link for each card. So I can say this. First one to go to page two, and this second card should go to um, page three. All right. So let's preview it real quick. I click on this add cut, it takes me to page two. And then I click on this second one, it takes me to page three. So you see, that's, that's the beauty of variables right there in terms of buttons. Okay. So now, what about? Um, I want this to show, uh, maybe if, let me change this to um, a different icon, right? And um, let me just say arrow, um, let me just say arrow here. All right, let's just go with this, right? Again, reflect across. 
So if I want to be able to customize the type of icon I show on each button, again, similar thing, select the button, and then I'll come to the name here and say, I want to create it, I want to set a variable for it. So I create a variable, I just say icon, right? And then you come out, you realize then you cannot enter the name of the icon and then say back to change to back. And I can say, I want this one to be a uh, home. And then, oh, there's no icon called home. Uh, let me say arrow rights and it changes to arrow rights. You see, so I'm at, now I can customize the icons based on what I want for each card. Fantastic. So now let me just move this here. And let me say, I want this icon here to only show if I set um, this, the link of this button to open in a new tab, you see here. So I, I'll click on this icon and then say, set variable, right? But to be able to do that, I need to first set this as a variable, the new tab option here. So whether or not I want this button to open the new tab or not, I set it as a variable. And yeah, I just leave it as a new tab here. Again, once you come outside, you see that now I can set whether or not this button, when it clicks, you open the new tab or stay in the same tab. Okay, fantastic. So now I want to show this icon, for example, when this is set to open in a new tab. So all I need to do is click on the visibility or the visible here on other styles, go to set variable and then see if this is a new tab, show this icon, right? That's all I see. So you see, once I do it, it's, it's hidden. So I'll go outside of here, select this and then say the button should open in a new tab. You see, once I toggle it to open a new tab, the icon shows. So this is good for when you have that external link icon there and then you only want to have it show up for buttons that open up in a new tab. So that's how you go about it. If I say this should not open in a new tab, it automatically hides. You see, so yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty much like a beginner's guide or beginner's introduction to variables. You can go ahead and play around with it. There's so much more you can do. All you need to know is that anytime you see a plus next to an element's name or something in the properties panel, anything, anytime you see a plus next to that thing, you can set it as a variable. So just go out and explore. Until then, I'll catch you next time.